Something that comes up quite often is we need to represent a set of discrete values. Like for example, the days of the week. There's only seven discrete days of the week. That never changes. It's always going to be the same. There's Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. In some languages, they have data types you can define called sum types or sometimes called enum types as an enumeration types where you can define data types that are discreetly made up of these defined values that you just give names. Uh, there is no such facility though in Go. So instead what we might do is represent these discrete values as say like strings, as we do here. Here we're representing the days of the week as just the string Sunday for Sunday, Monday for Monday. It's a Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, etc. That's pretty obvious. What we might do alternatively is just use arbitrary number values, integer values to represent uh, these respective days. And so like say zero would be Sunday, Monday would be one, Tuesday would be two, etc. And it wouldn't necessarily really matter what the actual number value is, as long as we're consistent when reading and writing our data. If we, when we use integers to represent days of the week, we always make sure that zero represents Sunday. As long as we're consistent about that, uh, the choice is totally arbitrary. Just like it's totally arbitrary what uh, numbers are used to represent characters in a character set. And the advantage here of using int values is that uh, integers are smaller generally than strings, even very small strings like these here are, well, let's see, you have the, the address of where the actual string data is stored, and then there's an array of bytes that make up the actual character data. So, so even fairly small strings uh, may be larger than you want if, say, you're representing a whole bunch of values. Like, imagine you had like thousands and millions of these things, in which case storing all of these string values uh, could be inefficient. Most of the time, it probably wouldn't matter. So integers are another option. And what you'll probably want to do is define named things that you can use instead of the actual string value or int value. Because uh, with strings, the issue would be you'd probably uh, very often create typos. And the thing is the compiler, when you have a typo in your string, the compiler has no idea. The, the compiler will accept any, any string as long as it's a valid string. Uh, and so you're going to have a really annoying bug where you've typed Sunday a million times in, in like a thousand different strings. And then there's one that's different. Whereas if I define a variable called Sunday, which is perhaps just a string value Sunday. That seems a little strange, a little silly. Um, but the thing is, because this is a variable, if I have a typo in it, like if I accidentally type uh, Sundary, well, the compiler is probably going to catch that because I probably don't have a variable called Sundary, right? I could, but most likely I wouldn't. So it's generally better to create these variables and then instead of using the values directly in your code to use these variables. And this is doubly true if I'm representing these discrete values as int values because the association of one int to the, the day of the week is basically arbitrary. I mean, there's, there's some logic here of starting from zero and counting from there, but it'd be very, very easy to make a mistake. If, if I had to remember every time I look at my code and I see a number three, I have to remember, oh, that's supposed to represent Wednesday. It, that's something I'm going to get wrong. It makes the code harder to read and it's going to be something I can mess up very, very easily. Whereas if I have an actual defined name Wednesday that I can use in my code and the compiler will probably catch any typo, that's much, much better. One thing we want to avoid is ever changing these variables. We define these variables and they're supposed to have the same value throughout the whole life of the program and it's never supposed to change. It's always supposed to be the same thing. So there's actually a language feature that helps us out in that regard. Instead of creating variables, we can create what Go calls constants, denoted with the word const. And so here this is defining a constant Sunday of type int, which is the value zero, and a constant Monday of type int, which is the value one. And unlike variables, constants can't be reassigned. And in fact, you're required to, when creating them, initialize them with a value. And the value you give them has to be a compile time expression. It has to be something which the compiler can compute at compile time. Like say, I can't have a call to foo here to get the value for Monday because it's a const. And you, at compile time, the compiler can't call functions. Functions only get called at one time. But I can't have something like one plus five, that's a, or 56. That is a compile time expression and that would be valid. Though there would be no reason to do that in this case. So constants are, as the name implies, constant. They can't be reassigned. And as a further convenience, because it is quite common to create a bunch of constants like this in succession, and sometimes also to create a bunch of variables in succession like here, uh, there is a convenience syntax for it where you use var and const, but then you put parens, and inside you, here we're creating a bunch of discrete variables on each line, and here with const, same thing, a bunch of constants on each line. So it's just a little syntactical allowance. Uh, and in fact, we can do the same with imports. Instead of having a bunch of separate import statements, you can combine them into one import statement with parens and then putting the, the things you import on each successive line.
And the constants which we define actually don't have to have a type. Just like number constants, like these number literals 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, as we discussed, they don't really have a particular type as far as the compiler is concerned. They could equally be a uint value or an int value or a float32 value because the, the, the number literal itself doesn't have any type. Well, here we're defining a bunch of constants, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and I didn't specify any type. I didn't say it's an int. I didn't say it's a uint or any other kind of integer or float or anything. It's, it's just a constant. And so here in main, where I have a variable a, which is an int, b, which is a float64, and c is a uint32, I can assign to any one of them, I can assign the value Sunday, because Sunday is the constant value 0, and 0 is a valid int value. It's also a valid float64 value, and it's a valid uint32 value. So the compiler is OK with each one of these. As a further convenience, because it's really common to follow this pattern where, where we declare a bunch of constants and there's from some starting value, you have a bunch of constants with all of these successive values, we have a special syntax for that. There's what's called IOTA. And so this is defining a bunch of constants, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. We're defining these constants in this order. And notice there's only an equal sign on the first one, and then we have the special word IOTA. And what happens here is that um, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, it's as if there's this equal sign here um, with iota on each one. And what happens here is that iota for the first constant has the value 0. For the next one, it'll have the value 1. And then next, it'll have the value 2. And then for Wednesday, it'll be 3. For Thursday, it'll be 4, etc. So if we just write Sunday equals iota, what's happening is that Sunday gets the value 0. Monday will be 1. Tuesday will be 2. Wednesday will be 3. Thursday will be 4, etc. Just like we defined up here. And when we use IOTA, we can actually use it in a more complicated uh, compile time expression. So like here, uh, when we define Sunday, we're saying the expression is 2 times IOTA. And again, IOTA in each, each successive constant uh, increases by 1, its value. But it's the same expression for each one. It's 2 times IOTA. So Sunday will be 2 times 0, which is t uh, 0. Monday will be 2 times 1, which is 2. Uh, Tuesday will be 2 times 2, which is 4. Wednesday will be uh, 6. Thursday will be 8. Friday will be 10. And Saturday will be 12. And in this particular case, it doesn't really make sense to define the constants this way. There's really no reason not to give them just the successive values 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Um, but there are cases where this comes up and you want to do something a bit more sophisticated than just having uh, successive integers. And, and so you can effectively arrange it uh, with a complex expression. Like say, for whatever reason, imagine that instead of having the constant start at 0, you want to start counting from 5. So if we just take 5 and add iota, then effectively then that would be uh, 5 plus 0, which is 5. Monday would be 5 plus 1, which is 6. Tuesday would be 5 plus uh, 2, which is 7, etc. And so we'd, we'd effectively have the, the constants defined in order starting from 5. And understand that when we use iota, we can actually give the constants a type. And when we do so, we only specify the type for the first constant, and then the, the successive constants all implicitly are the same type. So here, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, they actually all are ints rather than just untyped constants. And so here, oops, this, this is not correct. So the first assignment will be OK, but then this is going to be compile error. And same thing down here, this is going to be compile error, because Sunday is not an untyped constant. It's actually an int. Uh, we would have to cast, in this case, we'd have to say float64 uh, from Sunday. And same here, uint32 from Sunday. And then it would be OK to the compiler. But otherwise, if we just leave it like that, that's a compilation error. Lastly, with constants, I mentioned in passing that string literals are actually also untyped constants. Like number literals are not necessarily any particular number type. Strings are actually not necessarily strings. Uh, if we define some other type, which is a name type that's defined to be a string, then a string literal would validly both be a string and a my string. So say here, if I create a variable s, which is a my string, I can assign to it um, a string literal. And because the string literal isn't strictly a string, it's an untyped constant, it's valid to assign to s. So that's what's going on there. And so here we're defining two constants, uh, one of which is a string constant, this one called typed, and it has this value, I'm a typed constant. But then we also define this untyped constant called untyped, where it's the string value, but it's considered to be untyped. And so, so having defined the variable s of type my string 
we get a compilation error if we try and assign typed to it, because as far as the compiler is concerned, typed here is not just any kind of string, it's specifically the built-in string type. It's not an unnamed constant. Whereas if I assign untyped to s, that's okay, because uh, this constant doesn't have any particular type, and so it's equally a, a built-in string, and it's also a my string. Uh, whereas if I want to take the type string and assign it to s, I would have to cast it, as I do here, and, and now it's acceptable. The compiler will accept that, okay, this is a valid string. Again, be clear, there's no actual data conversion being done here. It's just the same data. It's just for satisfying the compiler that, in this case, what's defined here to be specifically a built-in string type, we want to use it as a my string, and so that's why we have to have the cast here.